one of you to our first uh, online English class. This is our first class, so we are going to start our first lesson from your Hornbill book. We have two books in, in English, one is Hornbill and the other one is Snapshots. And today from Hornbill book, we are going to start the first chapter, that is the portrait, the portrait of a lady. As you all know, uh, because of the prevailing situation, we are unable to begin our classes. So, we have to accept this medium of teaching and learning. And I urge each and every one of you to cooperate, to uh, watch the video, try to understand what is being taught and read, uh, and read your book thoroughly at home. So, let us begin the story. The Portrait of a Lady is written by Kuswan Singh. This is an autobiographical piece written by Kuswan Singh about the time he spent with his grandmother since his childhood. Kuswan Singh uh, spent his child, uh, spent, sorry, spent his time since his childhood with his grandmother, and he also he described how, with the changes of time, their relationship changed, and finally he also described the moving scene of her death. As it is not possible for me to open the book and read uh, paragraph wise, so I'm going to. Explain only the important point, uh, point, uh, point ones. So I have written down the points here. One by one, we are going to read the points and learn the story through the points. Number one is description of the grandmother. The author Kuswan Singh gives a description of his grandmother. He says that his grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was a very old lady. As she was very old, she looked. Uh, her face was full of wrinkles and she looked pale. But, and by seeing her, it was uh, hard for him, difficult for him to believe that she must have been once young and pretty. Because uh, she was, uh, in appearance, she was very uh, like bad. She was sore, she had a bent body. Uh, he said that she always keep her one hand on her waist in order to balance her stool as her body was bent and she always had a rosary in in her hands rosary means uh, wooden beads okay like old grandmother used to count the beads with their in, uh, with their hands so the author's grandmother also uh, used to count the beads every time and she was a very religious lady she always mourned in prayer that shows that she was a very religious lady and she also showed a symbol of peace and consentment. Then we will go to the next point that is close friends. The, uh, the author and his grandmother were very close friends. In, uh, since his childhood, the narrator, that is the author, was left under the care of his grandmother. His parents left him with his grandmother and went to the city to settle abroad in search of work. And in those, uh, and uh, during those years, he left, uh, he, left the, uh, he left him, sorry, they left him under the care of his grandmother and they stayed in the village. And he described the time he spent with his grandmother. His grandmother, he says, well, used to wake him up early in the morning, prepare uh, chapatis for him, uh, arrange his uh, books. Uh, like in those days, there were no books, so the author used to carry wooden slate with a yellow chalk plastered in it and those things were arranged by the grandmother and the other things like um, uh, pencil, rubber, eraser, whatever needed he used to tie in a bundle as there were no boxes in those, uh, in those days so the grandmother used to, tie, uh, used to tie them up in a bundle and get him ready to school not only that she even followed him to school because she was very much close to her grandson. She doesn't want to leave him alone even for a minute. So she even followed him to school. And she carried steel chapatis. Uh, with the steel, uh, the steel chapatis, she carried it to school in order to feed the village dogs. That shows that the, uh, the grandmother was a lover of animals. The school was attached to a temple. And other than reading the alphabets, uh, they were taught how to pray and sing for us. And the grandmother used to spend her time in the temple reading the holy books. And, do in, in, and in that way, she passed her time until the school gets over. 
to sit inside the temple and read the books and pray. And after that, they go back home together. And on the way, they used to uh, feed the street dogs with the steel chapatis which she carried along with her. And we'll go to the next point, number three, that is turning point in their relationship. The turning point of the author and the grandmother started when his parents sent for them in the city. Now from the village they were to the they shifted to the city. And the village life and the city life were completely different. The city life changed their relationship totally. Because whereas in the village they used to spend their time uh, together all the time, if, whereas in the city it was difficult for them to spend time together. The grandmother felt started feeling very alone and she didn't like the uh, city life because she was unable to help her uh, grandson in, uh, in his books because uh, uh, she, she started, he started having subjects like geography, science, English which, he was, which he does, she doesn't know. So she was completely unable to help her uh, grandson in, the, in her in his studies and moreover she couldn't even follow him to school as the author went to an English school and she uh, he used to go by motor, bu motor bus. Now the grandmother and her grandson uh, started seeing less of each other. They meet very often, they spend time very often. They get very less time to spend because the author was always busy in school or uh, in other things. Whereas the grandmother was totally alone. And so, she, uh, moreover, there were music lessons given in the school which the grandmother did not like at all. For her, music lessons were meant only for prostitutes and beggars, not from someone uh, belonging to, the, to a respectable family. So she was against all those things. As she was a very conservative lady. So, there's... Uh, bond of friendship also started began uh, started to break it was not like the uh, it wasn't like the time they spent together in the village the, ci the city life totally spoiled their relationship and uh, after completing his studies after completing his schooling the uh, the author went abroad like everyone went abroad for higher studies in that case they became more apart from one another. They went further from one another. Now, the uh, grandmother was left alone in the house and uh, as she had no work, as she felt very boring, she spent her time, she devoted her time with the spinning wheel. And uh, as there was no, uh, and like in the village, you, I, uh, I said earlier, that she used to feed the uh, street dogs here in the village, uh, in the city life. She started feeding the sparrows. She used to collect the steel, bread, and she uh, break it into crumbs. And every afternoon, she would go out and feed the sparrows. And the sparrows would come and gather, making loud noises. And eat the breast of crumbs. Some would sit on his lap, on her lap. Some, and then they would flew away. In those days, yeah, in that way, she used to spend her time. And the uh, spending time with the sparrows was the happiest hour of the day for her. And we'll move on to the next point, that is, narrator goes abroad. Now, after completing his university, the narrator, uh, uh, the narrator decided to go abroad. So, uh, the grandmother was uh, very upset, but she couldn't do anything. And she went and dropped her uh, grandson to the railway station and hug her uh, and hug him and kiss him. At that time, the narrator thought that the, uh, this was the last sign of physical contact between them. And the next, our next point is the author's homecoming. When the author returned back uh, from abroad after five years, his homecoming was celebrated by the family and friends, and uh, she did not look a day even older for the. Uh, for, for the narrator. Okay, in the evening, a change came over her. She didn't pray, she didn't talk, but she took an old drum and started beating the drum 
and collected the all uh, collected all the women folk nearby uh, nearby their house and they started singing what she did was she started beating the uh, drum very hardly and finally she fell down unconscious and she did not wake up and when they diagnosed me a heart it was found that she had high fever she was very sick but uh, maybe she uh, she was waiting for her uh, grandson to return back home from effort as she was very very old and her end was near she knew that her end was near but at the same time she was happy that um, she was able to see her grandson maybe for the last time the next we describe about her death how he died how she died grandmother's death grandmother did not pray and who was the grandmother was a very religious lady since the uh, homecoming of since the homecoming of her grandson she didn't pay she didn't see, uh, she didn't even utter a word not pay she only kept as, as i said earlier she only kept beating the drum and started singing choruses with the along with the women folk of the uh, nearby uh, of his neighbor of her neighborhood but the next morning she didn't wake up as i uh, and she knew that she was ill she knew that she was very ill and her end was also very near so by seeing her face they could even understand understand that she was not lively at all because her lips also turned pale and she fell lifeless and was dead when she died her dead body was laid on the ground and was covered with a red shroud and not only the people mourn her death but uh is come to the next point that is mourning of sparrows not only the people mourn her death but the sparrows also mourn her death because every after every evening she used to spend her time in feeding uh, in feeding the sparrows and she was very much close with the sparrows the sparrows also love her dearly and that uh, evening when she died the sparrows came near her dead body and did not and they didn't cheer up that means they didn't make any noise they came near the dead body without making any noise and when the author's mother gave bread crumbs to them at that point of time they didn't even uh, they didn't even look or touch that means they didn't eat um, and, and uh, earlier when the uh, grandmother used to give the bread crumbs to them she uh, they used to she uh, make a loud noise eat and used to fly away again but that evening they didn't even make a single noise and that means they were mourning her death and when her dead body was taken for cremation the sparrows flew away quietly uh, this is all about the story i hope you all understand in order to uh, uh, know more you have to read the book okay you have to read the book so that you know more about the story and till we meet again the next time take care bye bye stay home stay safe do for self do for family do for india and the change of covid 19 come here come here day